The NHL's fastest skaters all have one thing in common, ankles built for hockey. So I wanted to see just how much progress I could make if I did hockey ankle training every day for 30 days straight. What? It all started when I tested my ankle dorsiflexion a couple of months ago. I fell short of the four inch benchmark and failed the test. Although that was embarrassing, there was a silver lining. With how vital ankle mobility is for skating, I knew that I would unlock new speed on the ice if I could unlock my ankles. I hit up coach Dan and asked him to help me develop a plan for a 30 day challenge. He sent me the workouts and it was time to get to work. Hold up, why are the ankles even important for hockey? Well, if we take a step back and look at it from a big picture, we skate on ice using a thin blade while other players try to knock us over. Not to mention one ankle often holds our entire body weight as we move on to our inside or outside edges at high velocities. Just thinking about it in that sense, it should be pretty clear that the ankles play a significant role in skating, yet ankles are usually an afterthought for players. While strong and stable ankles give you better balance and stability on the ice, what I find more interesting is that the mobility of our ankles plays a considerable role in skating speed. A study from Marquette University found that players who can increase ankle mobility can get into a more crouched athletic position on the ice, increasing skating speed and efficiency. This can be seen among the NHL's fastest skaters who are often in a deep knee bend with their knee over their toes as they get into full stride. And it's why the ankle dorsiflexion test is popular in hockey. Ankle dorsiflexion is when you bring your toes toward your shin. Or to think about it in a hockey scenario, it's the ability to decrease the angle of your shin to your foot. If your dorsiflexion is limited, your lower body won't be able to get into the deep knee bend with your knee tracking over the toe that you need for a complete and powerful stride. Test it out yourself. Stand up and get into a quarter squat position. Now stride one leg out as far as you can as if you were taking a hockey stride. Now drop lower, allowing that knee to go over your toes and watch as your stride length magically increases. So now that you know why you should care about your ankles, let's see what we can do about it. By running through my hockey workouts over the past few years, I've increased my ankle mobility to a certain degree, but I've never really taken it seriously. I wanted to see what would happen if I focused on doing some ankle training every day for 30 days straight. To get started, I ran through three different ankle tests. The ankle dorsiflexion test was done to measure my mobility. And even though I was more concerned about my mobility for this challenge, I also tested my ankle stability with one-legged skating strides and T-stands to compare the differences in slow motion at the end of the 30 days. The best thing about this challenge is that it wouldn't interfere with my other training. From Monday to Friday, I worked my ankle training right into my warm-ups and cool downs on my regular training days, and on my off days, I ran through some ankle-focused routines from our edge work enhancer system that only took about 20 minutes. Day 10 in the books, just have to mark it off in the calendar. I love having these little 30 day challenges where I have to mark it off. It's definitely motivating. So that's something you guys can implement, some type of challenge for yourself each month. I need a haircut here. The barber shops are locked down in Ontario. I might have to go with the homemade mullet. Hit the thumbs up button on this video if you wanna see me rock a mullet for the next video. Feeling good though. Definitely have noticed from the eye test a little bit of extra ankle mobility and stability, but we'll have to see at the end of 30 days. Stay tuned. Unlike my 30 day shooting challenge, there are almost zero injury risks from doing exercises like the T-stand or ankle glides daily. And because ankle training isn't exactly taxing on the body or the nervous system, it was an enjoyable challenge to complete. By day 30, my ankles felt better, but it was time to test them out. All right, here we go. Testing time. I'm gonna measure from the middle of each. So right foot, four and three quarters. Holy crap. I'm not good at fractions, but that's almost, that's just under one whole inch. That's insane. Let's do the left foot now. Four and three eighths. Three eighths or plus three eighths, three quarters. What do we got here? We got almost a full inch. Wow, that's actually insane. The benchmark is four inches and I was falling just a little bit short before doing the 30 day ankle training. And now we're sitting at almost five inches for both my left and right ankles. Let's go try out these other tests. I can't see much of a difference with an equal shake on both sides in this left leg stride, but there's noticeable improvement if you watch the ankles here in the right leg stride clip. For this first T-stand, again, it's tough to notice too much of a difference. Both ankles are shaking quite a bit as they try to stabilize, but there is a slight improvement on day 30. On the other side, the difference is more noticeable as my day one ankle really struggles to stay flat on the ground while it looks much easier on day 30. Overall, this challenge was a huge success. To finish off this video, I'll provide you with an ankle mobility routine that you can do daily in your warm-up or cool down if you need a boost in your ankle dorsiflexion so you can unlock some speed. Before we get to that, can you do me a huge favor and smash that thumbs up button if you enjoyed this video so far? It'll really help out our channel. All right, so the first exercise is toes elevated squats, which are more challenging than they look. Find something to elevate your toes up just a couple of inches and perform regular squats going as deep as you can while keeping good form. We'll be doing 10 reps here. Next, we've got the tibialis raise. Start by leaning against the wall and walk your feet out from the wall until your legs are roughly at a 45 degree angle. Once you're in position, pull your toes up towards your shins. You should feel this one in your shin, especially when you start getting to the double digit reps. Perform 15 to 20 reps. 
Exercise three is the single leg wall ankle pumps. Start with your hands around chest height pressed against the wall. Walk your feet out so that your body is angled toward the wall and then pick up one leg and get it into a 90 degree angle. Your opposite leg will perform ankle pumps for 10 to 15 reps before switching ankles. The last exercise is half kneeling ankle glides. Get down onto one knee and rock forward with your knee tracking toward your baby toe. Go as far as you can while keeping your heel on the ground. To make this more efficient, I like to hold down my foot below the ankle with my hand or a band. Perform 10 reps per leg. Run through these four exercises as part of your warm up or cool down and watch as you improve your skating efficiency and speed. If you found this video helpful and would like to see more challenge videos or videos about hockey ankle training in the future, make sure you smash that thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel. And if you're serious about upgrading your hockey performance, make sure you download our app, Hockey Training TV, in the App Store. Let's go!